of all the souls I've met in my travels, his was the most human. <laughs> I'm not the man they think I am at home. Oh no, no, no. I'm a rocket man. Hope he has the right stuff. Before we begin, I want to remind you that if you love comics and pop culture as much as I do, you'll subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to stay informed of upcoming videos. Please share this video as that will help me gain subscribers as well. I also want to remind you to check out my columns and reviews on two sites, Comics for Sinners and Comic Crusaders. I also have my own franchises, Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypie and Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter. The latter has been picked up by Cutthroat Comics. Check the links below for more details in the link to Dracula Rising, which is available on Amazon. Here's some great artwork from Raphael Lanohouse from the origin story Foul Blood. Once again, available on Cutthroat Comics. See the links below. I also have a book which is a collection of my reviews and columns called Comics, Pop, Culture, and Politics. You can also find t-shirts and posters on Teespring. Again, check the links below for all Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter merchandise. And now, on with the show, this is it. Today, I want to pay homage to one of my boyhood idols, wishing the actor who brought to life Denny Crane, T.J. Hooker, and of course, Captain James Tiberius Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. His most iconic role, tonight's special guest star, William Shatner. Hey, you! William Shatner, happy 90th birthday, March 22nd, 2021. He was born in Montreal, Canada in 1931 to Joseph and Anne Shatner. After graduating from McGill University in 1952, Shatner became the business manager for the Mountain Playhouse in Montreal before joining the Canadian National Repertory Theatre in Ottawa, where he trained as a classical Shakespearean actor. Shatner was an understudy to Christopher Plummer in Henry V, which afforded him the opportunity to distinguish himself for a performance when Plummer could not go on due to illness. Without one word of rehearsal, either rehearsing the words or rehearsing the movement, what the choreography of the play was. I went on one night. The concept of going on while in rehearsal, because now we were starting to rehearse the third play, never entered in anybody's mind, including management, so we never had a rehearsal. And then one day, Christopher Plummer, who was playing Henry V, got ill instantly in the afternoon. And they came to me and they said, do you think you can do it? And I said, well, do you think I could talk to the actors who are playing the roles? Because I hadn't even talked to those actors. Now I was going to have to deliver lines of great verve and force, and I couldn't remember the line, what do we call this play? So I went over to the guy who's playing my brother, Henry V's brother, the part that I played ordinarily. That guy had memorized everybody's part in the play. He, when somebody missed a line in rehearsal, instead of referring to the stage manager who had the book, this guy would give you the line. He had the whole play memorized. And I saw him across the stage. I thought, oh my God, he'll know the lines. So I walked over to him. Now the cast is, what's Shatner doing? Put my arm around him. And I said, what, what are the words? Because it was a thrust stage. And there are no wings. There's nobody to say, the line is, or go off. You couldn't go off. What's the words? And he went, So I walked back, and then the lines came, and I went on. Later, somebody said, what a brilliant piece of choreography. Exhausted, brother goes to brother, leans on him for strength, then comes back, renewed. Little did they know. With that performance, Plummer was impressed how Shatner decided not to simply imitate the main actor's mannerisms, but did the opposing move for most of them, thus showing considerable artistic initiative. His film debut was in the Canadian film Butler's Nights Off, 1951. His first feature role came in the MGM film The Brothers Karamazov, 1958, with Yul Brenner, in which he starred as the youngest of the Karamazov brothers, Alexei. 
How can you hate your own father? There are fathers and there are animals who only sire you. He was never a real father to me, nor to you, nor to Ivan. He appeared opposite Ralph Bellamy, playing Roman tax collectors in the Vigilant of a Hallmark Hall of Fame live television production entitled The Christmas Tree. He has ten albums to his credit, including The Transformed Man from 1968, William Shatner Live 1977, Spaced Out, the very best of Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner, a compilation album, came out in 1996. Has Been came out in 2004, Exodus and Ontario in three parts in 2008, Seeking Major Tom in 2011, Pond of the Mystery 2013, Why Not Me with Jeff Cook, Shatner Claws also in 2018 with Iggy Pop, Brad Paisley, and Judy Collins. How's that for a variety of uh, performers? The Blues with Brad Paisley came out in 2020. It also featured Kurt Fletcher, Sonny Landreth, and Canned Heat. Not only is he a recording artist, but a writer too. He has written 10 Tech War novels with Ron Goulart, as well as several Star Trek novels with Judith and Garfield Reeves Stevens, some of which have been adapted to comic book format. He's also credited with a war series and Quest for Tomorrow. Chatner has been married four times, first to Canadian actress Gloria Rand on August 12, 1956. The marriage produced three daughters, Leslie, Elizabeth, and Melanie. Chatner left Rand while acting in Star Trek The Original Series, after which she divorced him in March 1969. Shatner's second marriage was to Marcy Lafferty, the daughter of producer Perry Lafferty, and lasted from 1973 to 1996. The third marriage was to Noreen Kidd Shatner, from 1997 till her death in 1999. Tragically, on August 9, 1999, Shatner returned home around 10 p.m. to discover Noreen's body at the bottom of their backyard swimming pool. She was 40 years old. An autopsy detected alcohol and Valium in her blood, the cause of death as accidental drowning. The LAPD ruled out foul play, and the case was closed. In 2001, Shatner married Elizabeth Anderson Martin. In 2004, she co-wrote the song Together on Shatner's album Has Been. Shatner filed for a divorce from Elizabeth in 2019. The divorce was finalized in January 2020. And now let's take a more prolific look at his acting career. On television, from 1954 to 1959, he was in the Canadian Howdy Doody show as Ranger Bob. He did two episodes of Encounter and five episodes of Studio One, as well as two episodes of Alfred Hitchcock Presents, then played Archie Goodwin, the unsold pilot to Nero Wolf. The Explosive Generation is a 1961 film directed by Buzz Kulick. It stars William Shatner and Patty McCormick. Then I say the thing all of us are most concerned with is sex. Like, how far a girl has to go with a boy just to be popular. The story is about Peter Gifford, a teacher who wants to teach high school students to think for themselves. On television, he played Carl Bremer in One Step Beyond, an early television anthology series for ABC Television. Then he did two episodes of The Twilight Zone, one of which is arguably one of the most popular episodes of the series, Nightmare 20,000 Feet. He also appeared in the Twilight Zone's chief competition of that era, The Outer Limits, in the episode Cold Hands, Warm Heart. Your ignorance makes me ill and angry. Touch it, scrape it, do something. You're a doctor, do something. It was to lead the way to, to new worlds, new life, new knowledge. Other appearances throughout the 60s include The Defenders, Naked City, Route 66, The Fugitive, for the People, 12 O'Clock High, The Virginian, The Big Valley, Gunsmoke, and Dr. Kildare. He appeared in Judgment at Nuremberg, a 1961 American courtroom drama, film directed and produced by Stanley Kramer, written by Abby Mann, and also starred Spencer Tracy, Burt Lancaster, Richard Woodmark, Maximilian Schell, Warner Klumperer, Marlene Dietrich, Judy Garland, and Montgomery Cliff. Set in Nuremberg, Germany in 1948, the film depicts a fictionalized version of the judge's trial of 1947, one of the 12 U.S. military tribunals during the subsequent Nuremberg trials. The Intruder is a 1962 American film directed and co-produced by Roger Corman, starring Shatner, and was adapted from a 1959 novel by Charles Beaumont.
Ostensibly, the intruder deals with the integration of a high school in the South. The reality of the situation at that time, 1960, was that to everybody's surprise, even in the upper South, integration was met with opposition not only by people, but the police. <gasps> The story depicts the machinations of a racist named Adam Kramer, who was betrayed by Shatner. You go to school around here? Uh-huh. I didn't know they had a college in Caxton. Oh, they don't. My, my, they do grow things fast here, don't they? I didn't know who Roger Corman was, but he must have seen something I had done. In any case, they wanted me to do the film. Well, I was an experienced actor, but I was young and unheralded. The entire picture was built around the character of Adam Kramer. When Bill came in for an audition, he was perfect. I thought this was a democracy, and I thought a democracy was based on the collective will of the people. Sure, of course, sure. And is it the collective will of the people that Negroes should be allowed to mix with whites right under the same roof? When I was offered the Corman salary, he thought he was getting me for a good price. He didn't realize that he'll learn to it. His shame and sorrow now, I'd have paid him to play this role. Then in 1964, William Shatner played a preacher in another less successful attempt to adapt an Akira Kurosawa film. In this case, it's Rash Oman. It was a Western called Outrage. In 1966, he starred in Incubus, an American horror film directed by Leslie Stevens. Filmed entirely in the constructed language Esperanto, the film stars Shatner shortly before he would begin his work on Star Trek. Also in 1965, he appeared on several television shows before Star Trek, including The Fugitive, 12 O'Clock High, The Virginian, The Big Valley, and Gunsmoke. Also, Dr. Kildare. Before doing Star Trek, he starred in a short-lived series called For the People, an American legal drama that aired from January 31 until May 9, 1965. The series starred Shatner as a New York City prosecutor. It was shot on location in New York. Well, sure. Why not? I mean... It is it against the law to have diabetes? <laughs> You're a very funny fellow. Where's the prescription? I told him I lost it. Where'd you lose it, Larkin? Corner of 78th and West End. I don't know. I don't know why the druggist called the police. Then came the iconic role that made him a household name. Star Trek. Desilu Productions had a first look deal with CBS. Oscar Katz, Desilu's vice president of production, went with Roddenberry to pitch the series to the network. They refused to purchase the show, as they already had a similar show in development, the 1965 Irwin Allen series Lost in Space. In May 1964, Herb Solo, who had previously worked at NBC, met with Grant Tinker, then head of the network's West Coast Programming Department. Tinker commissioned the first pilot, which became The Cage. NBC turned down the resulting pilot, stating that it was too cerebral. However, the NBC executives were still impressed with the concept, and they understood that its perceived faults had been partly because of the script that they had selected themselves. NBC made the unusual decision to pay for a second pilot using the script called Where No Man Has Gone Before. From there, the series was picked up and lasted two seasons, but was canceled. An unprecedented letter-writing campaign saved the series, and it was renewed for a third season. On Star Trek, Kirk was duplicated several times, once through a transporter malfunction, as two beings, his good half and his evil half, during the episode The Enemy Within, another time as an android in What Are Little Girls Made Of. Kirk, along with the entire crew, find themselves as evil beings in Mirror Mirror, which is in an alternate universe. Garth of Isar took on the form of Captain Kirk in Whom Gods Destroy. All of this culminates in a bit of a parody in the last appearance of the entire Star Trek crew during the Undiscovered Country. Killed one attempting escape. Now that's convincing for both. I can't believe I kissed you. Must have been your lifelong ambition. What makes this even more interesting is the first movie Shatner did after Star Trek left the air. It was called White Comanche, a 1968 Piella Western, starring William Shatner in two roles. The film is listed in Golden Raspberry Awards founder John Wilson's book, The Official Razzie Movie Guide, as one of the 100 most enjoyable bad movies ever made. No does brother talks like the white man he thinks he is. He's afraid to be Comanche, eat the peyote, drug of the devil. He did two made-for-television movies in 1970. Soul Survivor was the first one. 
The film follows the fate of the six-man crew of a B-25 Mitchell bomber. Sole Survivor is loosely based on the 1958 discovery of the B-24 Liberator bomber, Lady Be Good, in the Libyan desert. The Lady Be Good and her nine-man crew had disappeared without a trace in 1943. Following its first and only combat mission in World War II, the bodies of eight of the crew were found in 1960. The next one was the Andersonville Trial. The movie was based on the actual 1865 trial of Henry Works, played by Richard Basehart, commander of the infamous Confederate Andersonville Prison, where thousands of Union prisoners died of exposure. He appeared in the 1972 version of the Sherlock Holmes film, Hound of the Baskervilles. Then he was in The People, based on the works of Zena Henderson. He did episodes of Ironside, Mission Impossible, Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law, Hawaii Five O, and The Sixth Sense. Also in 1972, there was a return to his most iconic role. Uh, sort of. Captain Kirk was back, at least in animated form, in Star Trek, the animated series. Also around that time, he appeared in made-for-television films and other TV shows such as Incident on a Dark Street, Horror at 37,000 feet, Barnaby Jones, Mannix, and Go Ask Alice. He hosted a short-lived game show called Flick Flack and did other guest appearances in made-for-television roles such as The Six Million Dollar Man, Kung Fu, Pray for the Wildcats, and Invite and Convict. He returned to series television in the short-lived but fun Barbary Coast, which was an attempt to update the Wild Wild West. When that was cancelled, he did more appearances and live television films, such as The Tenth Level, The Oregon Trail, Testimony of Two Men, then narrated the documentary Mysteries of the Gods. On the big screen, he did movies like Impulse, where he played a serial killer, Big Bad Mama, The Devil's Reign, Kingdom of the Spiders, Land of No Return, and The Third Walker. On television during the late 70s, we find him on How the West Was Won, Little Woman and the Bastard. The 1978 film Crash was a made-for-TV drama film based on the true story of the first crash of a wide-body aircraft, that of Eastern Airlines Flight 401, a Lockheed L-1011 TriStar, which crashed in the Florida Everglades near Miami on the night of December 29th, 1972. The film more or less follows the true events of the crash, although the names of key characters were changed and certain dramatic events were fictionalized. And the final year of the 1970s saw Shatner return to his iconic role once again. We close the first half of our show with a look at Star Trek, the motion picture. I'm taking over the set of seat, Will. You're what? I'm replacing you as captain of the Enterprise. You'll stay on as executive officer. If you love comics and pop culture as much as I do, you'll subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to stay informed of upcoming videos. Please share this video as that will help me gain subscribers as well. I also want to remind you to check out my columns and reviews on two sites, Comics for Sinners and Comic Crusaders. I also have my own franchises, Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypi and Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter. The latter has been picked up by Cutthroat Comics. Check the links below for more details and the link to Dracula Rising, which is available on Amazon. Amazon. Here's some great artwork from Raphael Lanohaus from the origin story Foul Blood. Once again, available on Cutthroat Comics. See the links below. I also have a book which is a collection of my reviews and columns called Comics, Pop, Culture, and Politics. You can also find t-shirts and posters on Teespring. Again, check the links below for all Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter merchandise.